Say, neighbor, I'm so sure this is my service. Hallelujah. Glory. You know that song, the choir song says, I stand amazing. Does God amazes you? Is there anybody here that God amazes you? He, 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 the way God moves in your life, you are amazed. Is there anybody like that here? Shout, I'm amazed. Listen to me, God is a wonder. I came in this morning, I saw brand new chairs for all the ministers. And, I, I, and you see, that's how it's always been in this church. God just amazes us. You know, today, this month, all over the world, is Pastor's Appreciation Month. To be very frank with you, this is the, I'm just getting to know that. I didn't know it's October, and I'm so, so blessed to be born in October. Amen. So blessed. So, I, so somebody just want to appreciate all the ministers and pastors and deacons and give us a very comfortable chair so we can do five services. And not get tired easily. Praise God. That person that God knows, God will bless him. Amen. Sorry, God will bless her. Amen. God will transform her business, expand her territories. God will make her life more comfortable. Amen. Say amen. amen. I, I have something special to share with you in the second service. I don't know how the third service will look like because they have hijacked the third service. Some people have hijacked the third service. So please let's look out for how the third service will look like. If you're not here physically, join us online. Isaiah 49, verse 15 to 16 from the Amplified. Then we go to the message. Isaiah 49, 15 to 16. Please open your Bible. Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16 from the Amplified. Then we go to the message. Isaiah 49, verse 15 to 16 from the AMP Amplified. Glory to God. If you've seen it, please just read it loud for us. And the Lord answered, Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget. Yet, I will not forget you. You didn't say amen to that. Amen. Yet, he said even if it's possible for a mother to forget her nursing child and the son of her womb, he said, I, the Lord, will not forget you. The next verse. Behold. Now, he didn't just say, I won't forget you. He said, look, this is why I can't forget you. Behold, I have indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. You cannot tattoo someone you don't love on the palm of your hands. You know tattoo. You know tattoo is not just an American thing, African too. They do do uh, mothers, our great grandmothers, they have those things, they write and for memory or for whatever reasons. Jesus said, God said, even if it is possible for a mother to forget her son, her, the son of her womb, her nursing child, he said, hide the Lord will not forget you. He said, behold, I have indelibly imprinted, tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. O Zion, your walls are what? Continually before me. Let's read from the message quickly, the message from the message. MSG, yes. He said, can a mother forget the infant at her breast? Walk away from the baby she bore? The next verse. But even if mothers forget, I will never forget you. Never! That's an emphasis. Look. I've written your name on the backs of my hands. The walls you are rebuilding are never out of my sight. Your builders are faster than your wreckers. 
I like the message. He said the work of building is more than the wrecking building, the wrecking work. The, he, said, he said your builders are faster than your wreckers. So this year your wreckers will be put to shame. God will put your wreckers to shame. I want to talk to us quickly in the second service. God cannot forget you. Everybody say, God cannot forget me. Say boldly. It's a very common thing these days. We ask God, when? God, when? In fact, people don't hide it anymore, even on social media. When they see anything that God has done for someone, maybe someone just bought a car, that, a car of their dream, or just got married, he said, God, when? They put it as a comment. God, when? Sometimes we're all human. There's nobody that's never felt that way before. Or there's nobody that's probably not even feeling that way at the moment. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how close to God you are, no matter how good you are, there, has, there will have been a point in your life when you are expecting some things and those things are not happening as at the time you are expecting them. And you are saying, God, when? Every one of us have plans and we have dreams. Sometimes we even have deadlines. As at the time we want to achieve that, as at the time we want to do this and do that, and we have planned our life in that format, especially when we become, become mature to certain things in life, we set goals and targets and deadlines. But it's not every time, no matter who you are, that you meet your deadlines. No matter who you are. So there are issues in our lives that we all say, look, God, when? When are you going to do it? Sometimes we feel, by now I ought to have been there. But I am not there. And we are worried. We are anxious. We are feeling in our mind that, have I missed my way? Where did I miss it? At what point did I miss my steps? This is not the life I bargained for. This is, not my, this is not my plan. Many are the devices in the minds, in the hearts of man. But the purpose of God will stand. Please don't forget the Bible is complete. Many are the plans, many are the devices... I wish I can just give you that scripture's address. When many are the devices and the plans of everyone. But only the purpose of God will stand. This message, I can preach it very well because I've waited before and I'm still waiting. I know you don't look at me like someone that is waiting for anything again. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> you don't have an idea. My wife can testify. That my spirit has left this place three years now. It's only my body that comes here. This auditorium is not the adult auditorium to me again the last three years. For me, this is our teenage church. Our teenager could not hold service for the last two, three years. Our teenage church had to stop. Because there is no place to put the teenagers. So for me, I have vacated this place for teenagers... The upper room over there divided into classes because the children are almost congested. And this church is 23 years old. And I think we deserve. But you see, even though that's what I, I'm telling you, I try my best not to be worried and not to be anxious. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. I've waited before. I waited for 21 years. Believing God for a child. And had people make derogatory comments. Not that they say it so far. They say it close to somebody who can tell me. So you are hearing this message from a very practical angle. Not from a theoretical angle. On Saturday, I'll be 51. I've seen a lot in my life. I'm not old. I'm a young man. But these 51 years, I've seen quite a lot. 
started pastoring my, a church as a, in my early 20s. I was already a pastor, pastoring a church. I'm talking about head of a branch in my early 20s. And I thought I gave my life to God on time. So I thought things are supposed to be smoother than it is. But things didn't go the way I thought. My roommate for four years in school came here a visit some years ago. We sat in my office and we began to talk about because we know ourselves very well. We had to talk about so many things. And I told him that when we were in school, we didn't know this how life is. I don't know if you ever felt that way. Because when we were younger, we were making a lot of confessions of faith and declaring some things and doing and thought that those things are going to happen just exactly at the time and when and when and when, you know, just everything falling in line. But it, it's not, if I stand there and tell you that's how exactly it is, I'm lying to you. And we like to accept lies a lot. This is why you need to invite every pastor and every political leader you know to come on Tuesday 9 a.m. to this place. Because our expectation make us feel like we are God. It's only God who set those things and they happen at the right time. For man, sometimes we don't get it right. Can we be honest this morning? You have prayed about it. You have declared. You have you have given seed offerings that it will happen at that particular time, but it still did not happen. And you are wondering whether you have missed your way or maybe that God has forgotten you. I don't know if I have a witness here. If we haven't missed God's will or if he has not forgotten us, it's what is going on in our mind. Is it that I have missed the will of God or is it that God has forgotten me? What we're talking about right now, nobody is exempted. Although in Africa, we pastors and those who are spiritually groomed, we like to prove as if everything on our own side is just bam, 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 bam. So that other people can feel like God is only your God and it's not my God. But the real truth is that if we put a microscope on your life and look into the details of your life, there are issues in your life. There are things in your life you are still waiting for. No matter who you are. Whether you are an archbishop or doctor, reverend or apostle, right up, whatever you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So waiting is part of life. Genesis chapter 8 verse 28, 22. Genesis 8, 22. He said, as long as the heart remains, seed, time, and harvest will not cease. In the original Bible, it didn't say seed, time, and harvest. It says seed, time, harvest. That means there is a gap <laughs> between seed and and harvest it's a process and our processes are not the same why because where we are all going is not the same what god wants to make out of your life out of my life is not the same so some of us our processes kind of be have been kind of longer than expected or than our colleagues and mates and we are feeling why should my own be like that? When you should even be thanking God that your process is longer but the product which is the harvest is better. Cocoa and corn don't have the same timing. Corn is three months. Cocoa is uh, how many years? Close to five years. This man is an Greek expert. He studied a Greek Although, <laughs> he's into oil and gas now. So we have to listen to him. Between how many years? This man is a farmer too. Five years. Five years. 